Hi everybody, I'm Jay Fanishel. In today's lesson, we're gonna break down the groove for Gotta Match. So I've had a lot of students and a lot of people on the, on the internet ask me to break down this particular groove. Now this track was originally performed by Chick Corea on piano, John Patitucci on bass, and Dave Weckl on drums. And it's on the Electric Band album, the original Electric Band album. Uh, basically, it's a very fast tune and it's a mixture of kind of an inverted Latin beat along with a bebop swing and it goes back and forth between those two styles. I'm going to focus more on the Latin groove. First, let's break the groove down slowly in half time so you hear what that sounds like. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, great. Now what I want to do is break that down and explain exactly what they're thinking about when they're playing this beat. Now I look at it as kind of an inverted version of the timbao pattern. If you break down the sango, the bass drum part, which sounds like this, so this part, we call that a timbao pattern, and that's something that the bass player is going to play on top of what the bass drum is doing. So in this groove, basically we have a timbao pattern, but it's in a different spot. Instead of one and two and three, four, one and two and three, four, you're going to feel it more on the anticipation before the one. One, two, three, four, a one and two, a three and four, a one and two, a three and four. So if you notice, it's the same pattern, it's just in a different spot. Next, what I want you to do is we're going to go ahead and put a cowbell with each of those bass drums. And let's go ahead and do that in time. One, two, three, four. Next step, what we're going to do is we're going to fill in two snare drums in between each of those cowbells and bass drums. So basically, you're going to have like that. Right, left, left, right. Let's do that in time. One, two, ready, go. O, one, and two. Very good. Next step, what I want to do is I want to add an extra backbeat at the end of this phrase. So we're going to do a one and two, a three and four backbeat on the snare drum. One, two, ready, go. Okay, now if you notice, we're starting to build this groove and formulate all the subdivisions that go in between these anchor beats. And I call them anchor beats because it feels like these are where the accents are going to pop out. This is what's going to dictate the flow of the groove and all the ghost notes in between just kind of fill it in. All right, let's go ahead and move to the next part of this groove. Now the next part of this groove is going to be an inverted paradiddle and the sticking is going to be left, left, right, left. So, you're going to sneak that right in between these two phrases that we've done. So if we have this, in between those two groups, we're going to sneak this inverted paradiddle. Once again, the pattern is going to be left, left, right, left. Left hands on the snare drum, right hands on the cowbell. One, two, ready, go. Okay, so I know it's a little difficult just to throw that inverted paradiddle in between those phrases. So let's talk about exactly where it goes. We're going to take it on the pickup before two. What do I mean by the pickup before two? I'm talking about the uh before the beat two. One e and a two e end. 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 Okay? Now I also want you to place an accent on that end, the last note. A two e end. A two e end. One, two, ready, go. One e and a two e end. 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 A two e end. One e and a two e end. Let's try to combine these two phrases. Your right, left, left, right, which is starting on the a, the pickup before one, and your inverted paradiddle. One, two, ready, 
go. Good. The last step now is going to be to add that beat four in there. And that's going to solidify or end the groove. Once you have the beat four, it's just a matter of repeating that over and over again and completing our phrase. So let's try it, adding that last backbeat on four. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, and the two, and the two. Now, if you notice, when you play it slowly, there's a lot of space. There's a lot of breathing room inside of that. So feel free to go ahead and add extra notes or change the sticking slightly just to fill in some of those gaps if you want. If not, the groove is going by so fast that it's easy to you know, give it a little breathing room. And there's nothing wrong with that because it actually sounds very nice when you leave those spaces alone. But there's a couple of variations you could do to fill in the space somewhat. One, two, three, four. So there, if you notice, at the end of the beat, I'm adding an extra snare drum and then a pickup note on the cowbell to fill in that spot. Another way you could do it, it's a little harder, is actually to add three snare drums after that last backbeat accent. That's cool, but it's very hard to do because remember, you're going at a very fast tempo. Let's show you what that sounds like slowly. One, two, three, four. third one's actually a little trickier, and this one happens before the backbeat on beat four. So instead of leaving it alone and just doing two eighth notes, I want the end of two eighth notes, and four, and four, you're gonna do end of four. And you're gonna do that by splitting apart the bass drum and the cowbell. So you're gonna go end of four, end of four, kick, bell, snare, kick, bell, snare, kick, bell, snare. One, two, three, four. Very good. So, I mean, you could add your own variations or take this to the moon as far as you want to take it. It really depends on what you want to do. Again, some of these grooves aren't always written in stone. There's a lot of variations, a lot of things happening as you get comfortable with it. So don't think of it as it has to be this part, it has to be this sticking, that's the only way to do it. There's tons and tons of solutions to this stuff. So, again, use your ears, use your judgment, listen to how other drummers do it, and then come up with your own thing. So I hope this gives you a clear example of how to break down this got a match groove. I know a lot of you have been asking for it. And remember, if you're ever looking for any kind of extra help with some of your technique, getting your stuff up to a certain level where you actually hang on some of these tunes, check out the drummersalmanac.com. Our membership area is all devoted to learning drums and practicing. And it's a really, really great resource for developing yourself as a player. So I hope to see you there and I'll see you at the next lesson.